Every so often we see players that you know have potential, that you really thought should be a star, but just aren't. Then they get traded and that all changes. And these guys that were once not playing up to their standards were now playing like superstars. And it was all because they got traded to a new team and that saved their career on the path that it was headed. It's happened a countless amount of times throughout NBA history and today we look at 10 of them. We should first start off with the most current in the game today, which is DeMar DeRozan, who's a perfect example. On the Toronto Raptors, we all knew DeMar as a guy that could really go. Himself and Kyle Lowry would often lead the Raptors to one of the best records in the league and it happened for years but then in 2018 he got traded to the Spurs for Kawhi Leonard and that already meant that the Spurs were in a weird spot with losing Kawhi but we expected that DeMar should at least be able to make something of that team because he was still playing alongside Lamarcus Aldridge but instead his averages dropped to 20 points a game the Spurs only made the playoffs once in three years and in that one year they were out in the first round besides that they often finished in the 10th or 11th seeds but it was weird because DeMar was doing nothing with them wasn't able to activate playoff mode but he was only 31 years old. He was going through his prime, but instead he was playing like it was already over. So it didn't make sense why his game dropped off so much. But then he got traded to the Chicago Bulls. A move that saved his career. Because it's clear that the Spurs just weren't a good fit for him. Seeing how he's now averaging a career high in 3 point percentage and points, putting up 28 points a game, has been in MVP talks all year, and has led the Bulls to being one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference this season, after they missed the playoffs completely last year. So when it was really starting to look like things were over for him, the move to the Bulls really did save his career. Another current day player whose career was saved by a trade with James Harden because back when his career started we all knew James as the best six man in the league. A guy that could start some games when needed and when players were out with injuries but for the most part during his three years in Oklahoma City he mostly came off the bench behind Russ and KD. It was a role he was happy in and thrived in. He really set the pace for the Thunder bench and would set the team up to never really have a down moment which was why he won six man of the year in 2012 and he did this for his first three years in the NBA until the Thunder chose not to give him the amount of money he wanted so he got traded to the Houston Rockets and has since become a league MVP and one of the biggest stars in the NBA for the past 10 years. But the thing is, James said that he would have stayed with the Thunder and been happy had they offered him just $5 million more. So had he not have gotten traded, he would have just signed a new contract to spend another four years coming off the bench and who knows how long it would have taken everyone to realize that Harden wasn't just a really good bench player after that. So this trade saved him from years of being in that role and propelled his career way quicker than it would have had it not gone down. In a similar scenario of a team not giving their player the right opportunity, it brings us to Jermaine O'Neal. Jermaine was one of the few players from the 90s drafted straight out of high school and he was taken by the Portland Trailblazers. Well apparently Portland thought he'd be a longer term investment and didn't see much in him so early on because in his first four years in the league they played him 10 minutes a game and he only averaged three points a game and obviously growing frustrated he demanded a trade and got sent to the Indiana Pacers where he instantly became a full-time starter and averaged 13 and 10 in his first year but then became an all-star putting up 19 and 11 in year two for them and continued to get better every single season making the all-star team the next six years and helping the Pacers to multiple playoff runs. His career wasn't headed anywhere in Portland, but because he believed in and bet on himself, the Indiana Pacers gave him a place to really show what he could do, and Jermaine O'Neal delivered. Kyle Lowry took a bit longer to find his real home in the NBA, but he did end up doing so. He was originally drafted into the league 27th overall and expected to be a good point guard, but it didn't happen in Memphis because he just wasn't a good fit there, but then it also didn't happen in Houston. He got better and showed improvements over the years, but when you're in year 6 and are just now starting games and slightly breaking down double digits in scoring, you start to get classified as a guy that ceiling is just that. But then Lowry gets traded to the Toronto Raptors and something just clicked. He just happened to pair really well with DeMar DeRozan and it worked. In year two for the team, he jumped to career highs and put up 17, seven and four all year long, being a main piece on leading to the playoffs. And by year three, he had established himself and become an all-star. Kyle really was looking like he was just gonna have an average NBA career, but getting to the Toronto Raptors saved him and gave him the opportunity he needed to break out. It just goes to show just how much a certain situation can make or break a player. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we have NBA great Kevin Johnson, known for his Phoenix Suns days. But it didn't start out that way because originally, he was drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers 7th overall. And he didn't put up any crazy numbers, he only averaged 7 and 3 as a point guard, but he started to show potential that even the Cavs saw, but they still decided to trade him halfway through his rookie season to the Phoenix Suns, where his averages immediately jumped to 12 and 8 the second half of his rookie year. Then in his sophomore season, his first full one with Phoenix, he put up 20 and 12, and in year 3 about the same but became an all-star and became an all-star in year three and would later be their starting point guard in all of their deep 90s playoffs and finals runs sticking with the Suns for the rest of his 13 seasons in the league. I'm not saying he was going to have a bad career had he not been traded but clearly the Cavs weren't going to know how to use him and then making that trade saved him by sending him to a team that did know how. Victor Oladipo was in another one of those situations when he was originally drafted by the Orlando Magic second overall and him being in Orlando was weird. The team made it clear that he was their guy but they weren't doing much since they were still so bad. 
So even though personally he was playing great, they traded him to OKC. But even then, he still wasn't a great fit because he was playing as a second option to Russell Westbrook. So the trade that saved his career was him going from OKC to the Indiana Pacers, where in year one, he led his team to the postseason after they just lost Paul George, averaged a career high 23 points a game, and made the all-star team. And this was huge because the expectations weren't high for him coming into Indiana. The team was expected to start rebuilding, but little did they know they were going to start winning right away. And it really helped Victor too, because after bouncing around like that, he was starting to look like a guy that teams just didn't want for some reason. He was starting to look like maybe he was the problem, and that's why he couldn't stick around anywhere. And had it happened too many more times, where he ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it could have been bad news for his career. But with him finding a home on the Pacers, and keeping up that same level of success for a few years, showed us that the Magic jumped the gun on trading him, and that Westbrook was probably holding him back a bit. Now, Ben Wallace's route in his career shared similarities to Victor Oladipo, but started very different, because while Victor went second overall, Ben was undrafted, and it was actually the Washington Wizards that discovered him, and he spent three years there, being about an average center off the bench for the entire three years. Then they traded him to the Magic, and he showed pretty good improvements while there, but still came off the bench, and by no means had he made a real name for himself. So he was traded to the Pistons after only one season. And in his first season in Detroit, they actually allowed him to start, so he jumped up to averaging 13 rebounds a game, which was second in the NBA, and 2.3 blocks, which was 10th. But then in year two for Detroit, he won the Defensive Player of the Year award, and made the All-NBA first team. And by then, it was made official. Ben Wallace was a defensive superstar, and the Pistons playoff team was really starting to come together with him being the new anchor down low. And that trade saved his career, because Ben would go on to be part of many more deep playoff runs for the Pistons, win three more Defensive Player of the Year awards, and of course helped him to an NBA title, thanks to him being able to hold his own against Jermaine O'Neal and Shaq that postseason. And it's interesting, he had a legendary career as part of the Pistons, but before he got there, he wasn't a great NBA player, and after he left at only 32 years old, he was still really never the same. So it's another one of those cases where he was just the perfect fit for the Pistons at that time, and had they never traded for him, he may have been out of the league soon after playing for the Magic. And had that happened, who knows, maybe we just never know Ben Wallace. Isaiah Thomas is another one of those cases. He almost went undrafted too, being the last pick in the 2011 NBA draft. Then spent four seasons playing for the Kings and Suns, and he had always shown potential and was a starter too. He even averaged 20 and 6 for the Kings before ending up on the Celtics. So he was known as a good point guard around the league, but not a guy that was ever going to be a game changer. That was until the Celtics traded for him, where he became an MVP candidate, putting up a career best 29 points a game for them, putting the NBA on notice and going on a historic playoff run. And he did all that, then got traded for Kyrie Irving in the offseason. So sure, his career kind of faded away after that historic season. But to go from being almost undrafted to getting traded to a LeBron-led team for Kyrie Irving is still pretty great. Plus, I'm sure had he never gotten the opportunity with the Celtics, he would have just ended up being a sixth man for most teams during his career. Then we fast forward to the present day with Jared Allen, and I don't want to completely say the Cavs saved his career because he needed a few years to really get going. But I also think it's no coincidence that as soon as he gets traded there in his first full season for them, he's now averaging career highs across the board and was a first-time All-Star. I mean, everyone had high hopes for him coming into the league, but then he was kind of a letdown and was starting to seem like he was just going to be one of those guys like Miles Turner who could defend really well but was limited on offense. Well, now he's proved everyone wrong and has really leveled up on offense as well as continued to show out on defense. And I think it's no coincidence that it happened as soon as he got to the Cavs. I mean, who knows? Maybe if he doesn't get traded and stays in the Nets, a few more years go by and he slowly falls into that Miles Turner role and can't find his way out. Then finally, we have Kevin Durant. Now, his career never needed any saving in the traditional manner that the rest of these guys may have, but I think his reputation did more than anything. On the OKC Thunder, he was a fan favorite, one of the best NBA players in the league, and his game was respected by everyone. Well, as we know, once he joined the Warriors, that all kind of faded away, and the only thing he was ever known for was being a snake and the villain of the NBA. His game stopped getting as much respect because just the idea of him playing on the Warriors put a sour taste in everyone's mouth. Well, then he got traded to the Nets, and ever since then, I feel like that's kind of gone away. And sure, everyone still knows he was the guy that ruined the league for all those years, but he started to get more respect again, and gone back to just being known as a great basketball player. A lot of it also has to do with his Achilles injury and the Nets super team failing, because if it hadn't, he would have just been leaving one dominant super team for another. But since it did, and he struggled to win anything the last couple of years, the old KD is kind of back. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm out.